Okay. Thank you once again. It's good to have you all join us today. Again, from all over the world. Thank you so much for always um, supporting us. And we are really appreciative of that. Thank you so much. So without taking much of our time, we apologize for starting late. We wanted most of our members to join. So we are kind of 10 minutes behind schedule. So without taking much of your time, I'm going to go ahead and um, start the meetup for today. So today we're going to be looking into data with R. So um. Okay, so the agenda for today, we're welcoming all of you. As usual, we are grateful. We appreciate your presence here every day, every time. We are really grateful. Thank you so much. So um, I'm Billy Kisu. Well, I'm going to go ahead with introducing ourselves as organizers. So I'm Billy Kisu Olatunji. I'm the co-organizer of uh, Abuja R user group and the founder. So I'm a data scientist based here in Abuja. So we, I have other co-organizers with me. There's data scientists, these are professionals as well, Steven and Fidelis. They're going to be joining me soon. So they've been supportive. We've been helping each other grow the um, organization. We have so many wonderful members as well that are working with us, supporting us from behind the scenes. So I'll make a good mention of Victor, Lufemi, so many people there, with Ezekiel, we're really grateful for your support. Thank you. So that will be it for us. We have our sponsors, um, the R Consortium, they've been supporting us from the beginning and we're really grateful and Business Data Laboratory for their support as well. So to the big person for today, our honorable person, our speaker for today is Francis Mensa. So he's a statistician and a data analyst. So uh, I'm going to take a brief intro. So um, Francis is the founder and um, research scientist at Ghana R User Group, R Users Community. Sorry for that. He is a statistician, programmer, and data analyst with a strong background and experience in project management, monitoring and evaluation, as well as research. He is the co-founder of Kim's International Managing, so is the managing partner with research consulting and services. So it's a this is a firm that provides M and E that's monitoring and evaluation, research and capa capacity building in the areas of education, public health gender, water and sanitation, and livelihood for governmental and non-governmental institutions. So without taking much of our time, I think Francis would do more justice to letting us know more about him as I would hand over um, the stage for him to take us through the session for today. Francis, are you ready? Yes, um, I'm ready. I'm ready. I was trying to set up oh. something, but oh. I think okay. But I'm good. I'm good. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Okay, so I'll stop sharing now. Then you can go ahead. Yes. So um, thank you very much for um inviting me. I'm really glad to give me a talk. Um. Um, I'm sorry, I'm with the time. I and I thought it was seven o'clock Ghana time. So when when God, I have to just uh, uh, excuse them and probably um come oh, over. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. no so, problem. So, so that's, yeah, so I think we we'll just take that. But because I said the meeting was seven. I didn't come along with my laptop, but uh, I can still do the presentation using my phone. Yes, so as as she said, I'm Francis Mesa, um, the founder and uh, research scientist for Ghana R user community. So um, Ghana user community, we, we help um, um, with our programming from various levels. And um, we have um, 16 intercity 
our communities, which is at us currently. And then we just finished developing our website. And then also we are doing workshops online. So without much I do, um, I think we have to just start. So um, please, I, I hope you can hear me. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yes we can hear we're you. We're hearing you. Yeah, so my presentation today is going to center on, as I said, looking into data with R. Um, and over the years, me being a statistician, I have worked for government agencies, I have worked with uh, non governmental organizations. I run four consultancies, or let me call it NGOs and other businesses. And we, we always deal with data. We deal with data. And at times, when you don't understand the data which we are dealing with, it's normally difficult to make an informed decision. So that's why I chose data, uh, looking to data. So today my presentation is going to just be based on the Swadley package. Um, we are going to use Swadley package to dissect and to know more about um, data. So the Swadley package is a platform that uh, learning takes place when it comes to R. So um, as I said, I'm just using my phone. Um, anyone with any laptop available so that I just take you through. Anyone with laptop with R on it, so I just give some instructions, then we take it from there. Hello. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Sorry. You. Yeah. Yes. I I asked a question. I said anybody with a laptop available there. Yes, I'm on my laptop. Yeah. So can you open your I laptop am. and then can can they make you a co-host so that you can share your laptop? Just open our console and share your laptop with us so that I just uh, okay. give you some sort of presentation. Yeah. Okay. So are you on Swadley? Yes. So, yes, I'm yeah. So when when you open Swadley, you can see they say what? Hi, Swadley. When you are ready to begin. So you just type swadily. So type swadily with open brackets close. Yep. So enter. Okay. So type in enter. Yeah. Wow. So here swadily is telling you that. What will I call you? So here swadily like to call name. Swadily is actually a course on Coursera that uh, beginners in R. Um, going to, to learn R for themselves. So just type your name on it. Just type your name. Just by, uh, after the question mark, just type your name. The name you want to be called. So just type your name. And then type enter. Okay. So have you done that? So now, um aha uh -huh. so you can see that here we say what um let me just go through. so type in one just type in one or yeah type in one and type enter type one and type enter yeah i've done that i've clicked enter sorry I can't hear you. I said, this just enter. Sorry, it's it's breaking. I can't. Uh, can you can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, I can hear Hello? you now. Uh, yeah, I can hear so you now. On. Yeah. So click enter. Okay. Enter. Yeah. Click another enter because I'm not seeing so uh, yeah. So uh -huh, so um so here uh, we have art programming. Uh, the basis of art programming in R. We have the regression models and basic concept of regression in R. We have the statistical inferences, the basic of statistical inferences, we have the exploratory data analysis, and we have what don't install anything for, for me. So now 
click on choose one add programming choose one i should type one please yes one other place one. yes please okay i've done that so click on enter okay so i have two options our programming take me to the swell course repository which one so just a minute so you see these two uh things you've seen so one is our programming basics and the other one is take you take me to the swaddle course reciprocity i'll yeah. take you through that but for now let's finish with the course so click one add programming okay click on one so enter so you've seen here wait wait so you've seen here that please choose a lesson or type zero to return to the main course so here our lesson today we are trying to look at is 12 which is what looking at data so kindly enter 12 at the selection side 12, okay, 12. One, yes please okay yeah so 12 now no, that's true. okay yeah okay so voila so i think that is that is it so um, i'll just probably give instruction that you just you just put the commands and we are we are good to go so as i said earlier on today we are going to look at what um looking at the data looking Maybe. at the data in R. so so the package gives you the opportunity to learn out for yourself mm -hmm. you can learn out in your own convenience you can use R to write it to give a chance to practice R in your own convenience when you are doing that too it also gives you, it gives you an opportunity to design your own slice for presentation which i will take you through this time but because there's no time by our side let me just read and we'll go on whenever you are working with a new data set the first thing the first thing you the first thing you should do is to look at is to look at it what is the format of the data what are the dimensions what are the variables name how are the variables stored are they visit, are they missing data are there any blocks data so when you are having a data of say let me say from from a from b or data plant these are the, some of the things you have to look into to make sure that everything is correct that's what they said one you have to look about the format of the data the dimension of the data are they missing variables in the data are they variables stored in the data so these are some of the characteristics that you have to look into when you are working on with any data whether it's, it's whether you're using R, whether you're using SPSS, whether you're using MATLAB, whether you're using um, 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 Stata, RedCap, whatever software you're using, these are some of the things that you have to look for and take in course, and, be, and, and take what, and be careful with your data before you probably proceed. So please type in enter again. Hello. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Yes, I've typed. So, I've enter. clicked enter. Mm -hmm. click, right. Okay. So, uh, what have you seen? so after after clicking enter, you can see that this lesson will teach you how to answer these questions and more using the R built in functions. We will use the construction from, from the department of Agrix plant database. So here, Swadley package, they are giving us a data from um, a department from what? Agrix database. So click enter so that we see the data they are giving us to work with. Kindly proceed by clicking enter. Voila, yes, that's I've clicked good. enter. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I have stored the data for you in variable called plants. That is um, the list. So type in is brackets open brackets close, and then press enter for me. Okay, that would be ls. 
Yeah, just please. It's, 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 you can okay. just do copy and just paste it and just click enter. Yeah, I, I think it's already in my, in my environment now. Oh, that is nice. So what is it can help us read it? What is it telling you? When you did that, what did you see? So I have the data object in my environment. So should I click it or I should? So, uh, okay. So you wait. So for now, what, what I just want you to um, know is that when you click it, it gives you an example. So it tells you that you have what plans data stored in your environment as you're explaining. So now let's begin to let's begin by checking the class of the plants variable. So the plant variable, the plant is simply a data that um, is stored in Swadil package. The plant is just a data. You can have your own data, data or maybe number of children in your family, data or maybe number of stocks you have in your shops. Like, so this is a data. So let's proceed. Let's begin by checking the class of, of the plant variable with class with class plants. So please kindly just type class brackets open plants brackets close and then click on enter. Okay. So can you do what? It is there. Okay, it's saying that uh, it's uh, give us an output as data dot frame input. Wow. Okay. So data dot frame simply tells you the class of um uh, um what is in the plant. So can you read? It is very common. Can you read that one for me, please? You can help me. Okay, let me let me try. Okay, it's very common <laughs> for data to be <laughs> it's very common for data to be stored in a data frame. It is the default class for data read into R using functions like read .csv brackets open and closed and read .table brackets open and closed, which you'll learn about in another lesson. One amazing thing about this package is that any step you take, it just gives you a vivid explanation, a clear explanation of what you are doing. So let's click on enter and see what amazingly Swadish package will tell us. Okay, I should click enter. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, that's it. I've clicked enter. Okay, something is supposed to show. Kindly click enter again. Um, okay, okay, so that's it, that's it. So can you read what is there okay. since the data set is stored in the data frame? Uh-huh. Yeah, we know it's a it's rectangular. In other words, okay. it has two dimensions, mm -hmm. rows okay. and columns, and okay. fits neatly into a table or spreadsheet. So we're asked to use DIM. Brackets yeah. open and close plants to see exactly how many rows and columns we're dealing yeah. with. So I can so just here, copy this. So I just should copy I copy so and, DIM, and run it? So the DIM is just the dimensions, not the dimensions of the data, the number of rows you have. You want to know the number of columns you have. So I just copy it and paste it. Yeah, I've done that. Then click on enter. Now, so yeah. Here you can, you can see that we have the amount of rows being given to us as five one six. That rows, and then we have the number of that's the second one is what the number of columns, which are the variables. So the the number of rows can be called be also called observation or observations, and the number of Forms can be called what the variables. So we can see that we have what five one six six for the number of rows, and then we have the ten for the number of what columns in the variable. So click on enter. I think it's self-explanatory. So click on enter.
I've done that. Thank you. So, when you put a CD, I think all of us here and the youths, um, I'm not going to get straight out of the design of the presentation as of the two. Next, what I tell us, you can also use the number of rows plans. So, you want to know the number of rows that you can put this to see the number of rows. You just want n rows brackets of implants. So just copy the n rows, the implants. And then click on enter. Yes, I did that. Thank you. So after doing that, you can see here that um solid package is grading you. We have from 20. We have from 24, we have from 28, and we have 32. So it will be grading you. The grading simply means your progress of work. It simply tells your progress of, your progress of work. And you will do this till you get to 100. So now, let me go back to the output. Okay. N columns. So N rows, as I said earlier on, N rows is what? 5166. Six. So let's do the same for the columns. So can you do the same for the columns and columns? Just copy, paste, and I just um, type. So it's giving you different ways of running your data set <coughs> when it comes to looking into uh, So OK, so what have we got in here? Thank you. So you can see that the number of columns is 10. So these are some of the ways you can look at that. So what the data is presented to you? Um, as I said, I analyze a lot of people's data. And at times, people go out there uh, because they are doing their, some are doing their thesis, some are doing their PhD, some are doing their masters. They just go out there and just go and cook data. So they'll cook the data, come and give it to you and tell them, okay, please, um, statistician, can you help me run this, my data for me? So before you run someone's data, there are certain dimensions that you have to be careful. You have to make sure that you check to see whether the, the data is not cooked. Because with data, we, well, I, I think when I was doing my, um, First degree those days, we have um, something we call garbage in, garbage out. So with the data, whatever you give it out, whatever you put inside the data is what the data will give you, the results you get. So that's what we call uh, garbage in, garbage out. So let's proceed. Um, if you are curious, space is can you run this hello okay hello can i should i copy it and put it yes, there please, yes. Just put it there. Thank you, my. Yeah. It's... yeah. So, okay. Trainer. I, I think I so, need I need a certificate after this. I will do that. Give you um. Okay. After this training, uh, I'll contact the organizers. I think I have um a link that um you can exploit, so that when you go to a link, we have what we call research um. Oh, uh, what do they call it? I will share the link to her to her so that she will probably give it to you so that you study and you get a certificate on it. Um, okay. yeah, for free. Okay. So let, let's just proceed. Uh, Thank let's you. just proceed. <laughs> so, uh, so I think we've gotten uh, my co trainer rather sorry. So you can see that the object size in your PC is what seven five four five nine four four bytes. So this is the space that your currently your machine is occupying. This kind of space your machine is occupying. So let's proceed. Please, can you read what is there now that we have a sense of the shape and the size? Okay, now that we have a sense of the shape and size of the data set, let's get a feel for what's inside. So now I'm going to copy names brackets open and close 
plants and I'll put it here. Yep. Yep. Is so, that it? Uh, that it? Yeah, Trust that is it. So before you before you paste, sorry, before you click on enter, kindly um you see one amazing thing about swallowing package is that you just you just need to read and understand the text and then you apply. That's just all about swallowing package. Just read the text. Once you read, make sure you get what this text is telling you, then just apply. So click on enter, then we'll see the names of the plants. Now we want to dissect the data called plant. So click enter. Let's see what names are there in the plants. So we are now looking to the data of what? Plants. So we can see names. So we can see science. We can see foliage color. We can see percent mean. We Hello. Yeah. So, so yeah. you can see. Okay. Here. Sorry, I was trying. Sorry, please. Can you just give me a minute? Um, no. So I think we can continue now. Okay. So now, yes. Yeah, so now, all said and done, we can see that now we are not looking into the data. So, which data are we looking into? We are looking at. We are looking to the data of what called what plants, and in the plants, what, what we wanted to know the names. That, that are in plants. As I said, we have diverse forms of data, but this data we are looking at is what? A data called what? Plants. So, and even in R, in R, R has um, data that you can, also be, you can also use to practice. So for now, we are seeing the plants. So the plants, you can see names. You can see duration. We can see active growth period. We can see the pH maximum, and then a lot. So these are the names that we can see in the data. Um, so, um, my co-trainer, let's go on. So, can you read this? When we apply fairly description, can you read it first? Okay. We've applied fairly descriptive variable names to this data set, but that won't always be the case. A logical next step is to peek at the actual data. However, our data set contains over 5,000 observations as rules. So it's impractically, impractically uh, practical to view the whole thing all at once. So I click enter. So click enter. Thank you. I think, uh, it's, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, becoming this, this one. <laughs> so click on enter. I'm done that. So we need to. So, so what, what it's saying is that the head function allows you to preview the top of the data set. So give it a try with only one argument. Okay. So what would be the argument? What should I put here? Put in plants and then enter. Sorry, I didn't get that. Okay. Yay. Okay. Nice work. Mm -hmm. So once you've entered, you see the head. So you can see scientific name. So this is our first six here. So it was earlier on was that we have a lot of data. And like in the data, when you are running data analysis, there are some indicators that normally you look out for. So when there's a large data being given to you, just for example, like um, I was working on Ghana, I was, I was, I was on a project with the Ghana Statistical Service um, where we took data from this census we did, our Ghana census. So we were trying to run some data. And imagine Ghana, we are over, Almost 30 million, I, I plus or minus, I start to be corrected. And see, Ghana, we are many. So if you say, okay, we want to analyze all the data, at a point, the data is very vast, it's very plenty. But you need to know the indicators in which you are running with. So that's why here, the head simply tells what the first six rules or something. So just um, read what is next. Probably you get a vivid understanding of what I'm trying to see. So, Michael, um, Trina, 
please can you read this take a minute to look at to look through can you read for us okay okay take a minute to look through and understand the output above each row is labeled with the observation number and each column with the variable name your screen is probably not wide enough to view all 10 columns side by side, in which case R displays as many columns as it can on each line before continuing to on the next. Thank you. So this is um, self-explanatory. So this is just self-explanatory. So just click on enter, then we'll proceed. Okay. Yeah. So, um, can you read again? Can you go on? Okay, okay. By <laughs> default, head shows you the first six rows of the data. You can alter this be alter this behavior by passing a second argument, the number of rows you'd like to view. Use head bracket open and close to preview the first ten rows of plants. So who can so do can this I for, guess that? Um, can I try to do that? Yeah, I want you to try that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an award. So try and guess that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is going to be plants. So the second mm -hmm. argument as described there is going to be 10. So ten. for the yes. number of rows. Yay, I got it. Yes. <laughs> wow. Wow. Bravo, bravo, bravo. <laughs> So I owe you, I owe you a gift. Okay. So let's proceed. Mm -hmm. So the same applies. Using the till to preview the end of the data set, using the till. View the last 15 rows. I think this, who can help us? This? Who can help us? So, I, I think from the from our participants who can help us, maybe we can code along. If you have any issues, please kindly put it inside the chat box. I would my colleagues will attend to that. Fidelis will be able to attend to that. Okay, somebody is raising up their hands. Bola. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Please let's give give the person. Uh, okay. So okay, kindly go ahead, it, you can unmute yourself. Okay, to give it a try, that um, yeah. argument will be tail, open your parenthesis, plant, uh -huh. comma, 50, close your parenthesis. Over. Wow. Awesome. So you also deserve an award. So um, after the training, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be giving your award. Thank you very much. So can you type it? Thank then you. Let's proceed. Okay, let me type that. Tail. Parenthesis plants, then I'm using 15 or 50? 15, one five. Okay, okay, yeah. Awesome. So enter. Yay, thank you, Bola, for the support. Thank, thank you, you, Bola. Thank you, Bola. Um, 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 I owe you an award, so you definitely get your award. Thank you. Okay. Here, you can see that we have the head and we have the tail. Um, data set. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, so. So yeah. I think the next thing, okay. should I read out what we have here? Yes, please. Yeah, can you do so, please? Okay. <laughs> okay, so what we have here is um, after previewing the top and the bottom of the data, you probably notice lots of NAs which are our placeholders for missing values. So use summary bracket open plants then closed to get a better feel for how each variable is distributed and how much of the data set is missing. So I think I'll copy this. Perfect, perfect. Okay, yay, I'm learning. Summary, you are learning, and I think I want you. I need to give you an episode. Oh, so that's yeah. good. So just enter. Mm -hmm. Voila. So this, this are just a basic 
Uh, this one we call basic district, uh, descriptive analysis or something. We have the mean, we have the median, we have the mode, we have the quartile, we have the maximum, and we have the missing values. So um, all this data set. So this is what you look into data. Once someone gives you a data set to analyze, or once someone gives you a data set to help him out with, these are some of the things that you have to take in consideration before even proceeding to analyze the data for the person. So that once you see, that, okay, there are, there are a lot of missing values. So let's explain this missing value thing. Um, for instance, when we're doing, okay, we just started with that. We are doing what we call IBES. IBES is simply. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. So IBES is simply conducted by Ghana Statistical Service to what they seek to do is that they want to know how businesses in Ghana are performed in the market. So with IBES, they contacted me and my team to develop um, a software that they'll be using to collect the data. So we develop a software called CS Pro. So we use a CS Pro, we, we developed it, we train enumerators, we send them out to do um, piloting. So we send them out to do pre-testing. So when they went out to do pre-testing and they came back, there a lot of missing Hello, Francis, are you still there? Uh, we'll okay. okay, do you, you want me to, I should click enter. Yes, I Oh. Okay. So can you read what is there? Okay, I should read it. Okay, I'll okay, I'll read it out. Okay, for categorical variables called factor variables in R, summary displays the number of times each value or level occurs in the data. For example, each value of scientific name only appears once, since it is unique to a specific plant. In contrast, the summary for duration, also a factor variable, tells us that our data set contains 3,031 perennial plants and 682 annual plants. Etc. Thank you. Thank you. So it, it's just giving you um uh, a just frank interpretation that you just so, so what we have now again. So trainer kindly was honest by reading for us again. <laughs> Okay, okay. Sorry, I can't hear you clearly, Francis, um, but I think so I should I click saying, enter again. Click enter. Okay, so so what we have now is that you can see that I've truncated the summary for active growth, active underscore growth underscore period by including a catch-all category called order. Since it is a categorical slash factor variable, we can see how many times each value actually occurs in the data with table, brackets open, plants, dollar sign, active underscore growth underscore period. Then we close the bracket. So I, I'm guessing I have to copy this out and Put it at the court. Right, right. Yeah, I'm hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, I'm getting <laughs> smarter with this. Thank you. Wow, uh, you deserve another award. So I think how many awards? That's three or four. Wow. 
Okay. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll go through the recording, then I'll be able to tell you the actual number. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll award you. I'll give you a free our next year's conference in Ghana, uh, okay. which we'll be doing in Ghana. So. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, uh -huh. so, so what do we have here? So I think we have a breakdown of yes. the categories in the column or the variable, active underscore growth underscore period. Perfect. So here they are just trying to give us an analysis on the plant, act, the plant active growth period. So here, the plant active, active growth period is just an indicator they are trying to just explain to us. So let's kind of proceed. Let's proceed. Okay. Um, I think okay. here we're at the prompt now. Okay. So, so can you read? Okay. So each, each of the functions we've introduced so far has its place in helping you to better understand the structure of your data. However, We've left the best for the last, for last, okay? So perhaps yeah. the most useful and concise function for understanding the structure of your data is STR, brackets open and close. So, so um, would who can help us with this? Us? Yes, exactly, yeah. We need someone to help us there so that I don't get all the gifts. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wouldn't mind. So, okay, who is going to go for it? We have Bola, Doi, Ebenezer, Gabriel, Michael, Ulufemi Rashid. Who is going to go for it? And remember, if you have any question, just put it in the chat box. So if you want to go for it, kindly unmute yourself, then you can try. Okay, I think, let, let me give that a try. We're going to have the recordings and we'll, and we'll, we're going to look at maybe October, we're having our uh, in-person, we can help you out with as many of the issues that you're coming across while learning R as much as we can. So let's let's go up with this one now. I think I can take all the gift and share when we have the in-person <laughs> meetup. I'll share what I can share. Yeah. So let me just try that now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then it's gonna be plants. Perfect. Okay. Yay. Perfect. Voila. <laughs> wow, another award has been given to you again. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. Here, so here <laughs> we are just trying to um explain to you what the structure of the data looks like. Everything has mm -hmm. a structure. Even our own body, we have a structure for our body. So here mm -hmm. you can see that we have the character, we have the we have numeric, we have integer, we have character. So here they are just trying to tell us the structure of the data. And believe me, if you get this ten wrong, at times your data will be messed up. So once a data is given to you, the other thing to look at is the structure. So they're able to know the structure in which we are dealing with. Because at times some people mistakenly interchange them. Something that's supposed to be character, they will do it in numeric. Something that's, something that's supposed to be integer, they will do it in character. And what you are you will just be seeing error of that. So, and looking into data, the structure is very vital. In as much as possible, you have to look at the structure, the dimension. That's what we are still looking at. So, my core trainer, let's proceed. Okay. So, we have the structure. Okay, let, let me just read this out. So yes. structure yes. open bracket is actually no, read, a very read, read, general. Sorry. Um, read the beauty of the structure is that it combines okay. many of the yeah yeah. Sorry for interrupting. Okay, no no problem. So the beauty of STR 
brackets open and closed is that it combines many of the features of the other functions you've already seen, all in a concise and readable format. At the very top, it tells us that the class of plants is data frame. That's here. Okay, so and that it has 5,166 observations. That's the abbreviated part there. 5166 OBS, the with the dots there. So then um the 10 variables. So we have off 10 variables. Okay, so it then gives us the name and class of each variable as well as a preview of its content. So just like we have here, I think that is what he's trying to explain to us, I think. Am I right? Yes. Okay, thank you. So um, let's see how bracket open and close is actually a very general function that you can use on most objects in R. Anytime you want to understand the structure of something, a data set, function, etc., str is a good place to start. So I think I can uh, click enter again. Yes, please. Press the enter button. Yeah, okay. So what is the first? So I think it's a summary of what we've done so far. So should I go ahead? I should read that? Yes, you can read that. Okay. So in this lesson, you learned how to get a feel for the structure and contents of a new data set using the collection of simple and useful functions. Taking the time to do this upfront can save you time and frustration later on in your analysis. Wow. So let's proceed. So would you like to receive credit for completing this course on Coursera.org? Yes. You said? Which of the numbers should I click? One or two? Click on one. Click on two. I should press two. Okay. Okay. Okay, my email. Okay, my email. Okay. Okay. Enter. What is your assignment token? I don't understand that. Uh, so the assignment token okay. is generated for you. So Get it. I didn't get what you. One. One. Two. Um. Okay. Should Should I press the two? No. Press one. Okay. Okay, I think I get I got myself into trouble. Okay. So two okay. just put email address. Okay. One, two again. I think this time it is a no. So no. No, no, no. Okay. So that will be a two again. Okay, type zero to exit. Let type zero. Wait, 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 now it's based on the here. Wait, can you wait? Don't type zero. Just wait. Are you with me? Okay, so now we are done with the board. So can you type two? Type two. And I'll show you something. Two. Sorry, I can't pick. 
Okay. 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 Hello. Hello, Francis. Hello, are you still there? So um, I'm going to round up the program today for Francis who is having kind of technical difficulties on his side. So, but we want to appreciate you so much. It was fun being with you tonight and um, we really appreciate it. And we're going to take this further with um, the group. We're hoping to do more with our exposure to swell um, package. So we're going to do more and we're going to help ourselves grow. Thank you so much for uh, exposing us to this package. It's been wonderful and it's fun learning with it. So thank you everybody for staying with me, with our group. So far, we really appreciate your time and um, we look forward to seeing you next time. So thank you so much, um, Francis and everybody. So it's a good night from here and bye-bye.